Aemon II had inherited the throne at an age where such power and wealth was still to be learned by him. His father had died in a night, by knives to his neck, assassins and cutthroats who seemed intent to slay House Cinder into nothing. He inherited an empire which continued to grow, but perhaps was growing too fast, becoming harder and harder to manage. Only recently, some colonies had failed. Quite simply, his inheritance was not going smoothly. Though his actions at the coronation certainly did not make things any easier. At the banquet after his crowning, Aemon II proclaimed to all men in attendance a new law which he would enact, one that would define the generations to come as a core part of Illyria. His brothers had no idea what was coming for them. To Haven, the next in line, until the son was born to Aemon, was barely old enough to understand the true gravity of what had been said. I decree that from this day forth, the title of North Valyria and all kingdoms within it shall be held only by those of pure and complete Valyrian blood. It shall be held only by those of pure skin and pure character. It's no wonder he didn't mention pure hair, for Aemoth himself did not have it. His hair was brown like his father before him, rather than the natural white that the Valyrian was known for, the silver and almost gold of beautiful Valyrian blood. Perhaps it was this personal disgust, this anger at his own diminished appearance, that he chose to take action to prevent any further degradation of the bloodline. Perhaps it was greed or anger. Perhaps it was hatred towards his young brothers. Or perhaps it was just a move to put his full-blooded brother as heir over his two half-brothers, one's he never seemed to speak with. There was outrage from some, cheers from others, while others just stayed quiet, awaiting the promises of the Emperor. The twenty-year-old, known to be cruel and vindictive, promised to expand the Empire, to rebuild the treasury and slave farms, and to pay to rebegin many of the lost colonies under his father's leadership. It was a noble gesture, but one that would cost a lot of coin coin that Aemon simply did not have. Outside of North Valyria, there were as many threats as inside, enemies lurking on in each every corner. Within the Empire, any man or woman of cinder blood held a claim to the title, and by his own admission, if they were Valyrian, perhaps they were better suited to the throne than he. His dragon was small, weak, and young, much like himself, although he was finer with a sword than his dragon would ever be with its claws. But there were others out there with larger dragons, stronger dragons. Those that could not be denied. Iphelix had no rider. But if they were to gain one, well, that figure would become a very powerful member of society. What was to come? Well, the maesters have different names. The Era of the Tyrant, the War of the Merry, the Dance of the Dragons, the War of Cinder, the Era of Blood. One thing they all agree on, however, is that all the blood and death which had been spilled and caused in the eras before, it could not compare to the bloodshed which was about to dominate the Empire as dragon fire would once more descend on Illyria. Illyria was going to burn. Hello guys and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, a game of thrones. Where we are continuing, or I suppose this will be our first time fully playing as Emperor Aemon II of North of Illyria. Now, Aemon the second is a very interesting <laughs> figure. He is a squire, not fully trained yet as a knight, but he still has a little more to go in his training. He's a decent duelist, as we can tell from his combat skill. Wrathful, greedy, deceitful, brave, and envious. Basically, a fighter before everything else. And before we begin, I am in a new place with a new setup. So... Not had as much time to work on this video as I usually do, as 
a lot of this week has been moving and obviously my setup is different my microphone is different i can't use i used to use a big arm thing for my microphone which sadly i can no longer use and not being able to use that means that this video is going to be with my microphone in a different position hopefully it will sound all right that's my hope at least and if it doesn't sound all right i will try and fix it for next video i promise you that but I want to go over the, the situation as it's changed. So we have uh, the lands which failed to colonize uh, have been given new funding. The most interesting one for me was this uh, man had a decent amount of coin and I was able to use it uh, with a bit of a loan for me to get to Kozai, which is obviously going to be a really uh, weak, weak colony. But I don't know if it's because he took Gozai or just in general, but he has a Valyrian steel blade. He does not yet have a son, but I do hope he has one, because this will be a very interesting line to continue. If he does die, obviously his land would go to this guy who does have children. But he has a Valyrian steel blade of his own named Mad Flame, which I believe must have something to do with these islands. Very interesting one. And the biggest change is at the coronation, Aemond being a Valyrian, you know, despite not having the white hair that you would expect of a Valyrian, is a Valyrian purist and has disinherited his brothers of other culture, mainly uh, Tehaven. Tehaven, at 13 years old, was next in line for the throne, and, um, you know, until Aemon had heirs as the eldest brother. But, you know, high Valyrian in name, not high Valyrian in his appearance, and he's been disinherited because of it going to be huge, you know, a very tough thing for him to take. Especially since Vagan has also been disinherited, as has Mataris, who actually has a dragon egg of Volgavis. So very different status quo in the realm. I do also want to look and see if there are any other Valyrian women's story. There's some Essosi Valyrians. Um... Any High Valyrians, because we have been slowly reintegrating the High Valyrians back into the culture. No, there's a couple of Valantians by the looks of it, yeah. They're still a Valyrian subculture, so I would consider them. But I think there was a 14-year-old High Valyrian, which is probably the best option from what I saw. Or Essosi Valyrian, rather. Yes, uh, Melissa here. Of House Voltar. We'll marry her. Turns out, I just recorded the majority of this video without actually recording it, which is incredible. Yeah, so I just basically played through a whole five years without recording. Excellent work by me, so I'm not actually sure what I did or did not cover. <laughs> uh, what I did want to do is make Tolos or Illyria a new crown capital, and I wasn't sure of which. Because I feel like Illyria is now starting to be outcarried a little bit by these lands. So I did want to go back to Illyria. Um, but we also have Melior March, Zoclos, Sport of Sires to deal with. So maybe Melior March? No, no, you know, no, we will do Illyria actually. A bit lavishly on food. We are going to need gold. Uh, we are almost definitely going to need gold. Um, God's, apparently my castle was broken in some way. Whoops. Uh, train some troops in Tolos and oversee the realm. Or some state wrath. Scheme in case I get killed. I do want to build some spy networks, possibly. To oh I should, crap, I should send you a gift so you like me. Uh, to possibly start trying to uncover who killed my father. Because he died under mysterious circumstances, and you know that means only one thing and thing like this. And I would like to investigate and find out what happened. We also are going to need Oh the brother I disinherited has birthed Tolisson, which is the uh, child of my dragon. Uh, 
Um, for you, I will, though, because I need you to finish colonizing. Please dig in, my lords. Enjoy the feast for my father's memory. I'm not going to make my Lord Paramount dislike me. What's this? Why does my rival want? Oh, my rival wants me to kill my rival. I hate both of you, but sure. Why not? I'd like to know if there's a plot against me. That's going to be the big thing. I also probably need to prepare some slave raids. And I'm not sure where. I could try it on some of the Summer Isles. There's the Summer Isles. Again, you know, that's where the majority of them come from. You just raid here over and over again. And as I've said, part of me wants to colonize all of this. Probably easiest would be the free snakes, maybe. Most because I probably only need to send like this battalion, and that would be it. Sure, I shouldn't need much more than this. I do wish I didn't have to call in my vassals every time. If I didn't have to, I wouldn't. Ah, oh, the Bank of the Roin. If you don't pay these guys, they pay usurpers to come and claim your thrones. So I'm just gonna... I wouldn't like to pay him, but I don't want to deal with the outcome of not paying him is more the problem. Wait, is that my wife? Yeah, let's not have my wife lead this army. Very much like to keep my wife alive. At least for the time being. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, she should definitely rest. Bulgarians have never been the best of the, the best at mental stability, so that makes some sense. The Lanzas came all the way over here. How nice of them. This could this also could be a good colony to take these isles down here, but I do think the Summer Isles would be the primary if I did want to start building up a colony, they'd be the primary place. And I'm maybe considering it just so we have a lot more war, because I don't want to Oh shit. Father, my uh, uncle died, Lord Paramount Valar. Died in battle to some random people on these isles. That is not what you want. So now Astapor has Lord Paramount Rhaegar. My cousin. He hates me? Is he my rival? Crap. Okay, I'm going to have to move to start. No, he is my rival. Damn, so I can't even try and sway him. This is going to be a problem. And his heir is the second wife of the Lord of Marine. Or Kala. I was about to say maybe I could name. No, Kala's a perfect name. Get you back on the ship. Get you back home. And I'm going to own this immediately, so these lives. Just because I want the money. You know, cotton, building these colonies is expensive, and I've, as we've said, seen I have debts. Why is Astapor not rejoined? He's at war? Oh, 
What's up? Where? Oh, is it not my wall? No, it's okay. It's not an actual wall, I guess. Then. Get these armies back down. I'm gonna start considering Dragon Conquest. I don't think I can Dragon Conquest anyway, just yet, because Zolgas needs to be a bit older because his marshal is low. Get the weights for his marshal to go up. Have they landed? Oh, that should be no problem at all, surely. Just raise the Valantian troops. Expect them to get morale up. Yeah, I guess as the poor will rejoin us when they've finished their war. Slaver's Road. That's weird. My, mo my mother has been mourning the loss of her late husband for over a year now and is still reluctant to get remarried. Stop this nonsense. But she refuses. Trust. That's fine. Um, marry as you please. Pick some of Illyrian, dude. It's more than fine with me. That's an option to... Oh, you have to be Republic to do that. Just see if there's a way to turn off getting these off. It. Atlantis is at war. Or, no, or they're just hostile because of the raid, I guess. That's why he's raised his army. Oh, Hassan is back! After not being one, it's become one again. I'm not going to bother slave raiding them because I don't see a point in it. Could just keep doing a whole bunch of slave raids down here. And then uh, move, start conquering here proper. But these provinces probably aren't that great anyway, are they? No, like it would be a very weak colony. Maybe colonizing is a thing I should wait. Oh, my aunt is riding Ifalex, is she? Interesting. Interesting. Malaris the Merry. It's very interesting. So Regal's going to be a real problem if he ever stands against us. So, I'll have to keep that in mind. Do we not have a court position? It's not good. Let's get Baylor back as Chief General. Forces rumours I'm getting killed. He really the best Archon I have. Of all the places you could rise, why would you rise there? That seems like an awful idea. How did they even get there is what I want to know. Did they sneak over the Sea of Sides? Am I aware of the plot to kill me, or is this an unknown plot still? No, I know of the plot. Valantis and Bathan are involved in it. We can't end the plot. Rival, vassal. Able to... Maybe we'll stop back in plot. If you're out of the plot, can we get Bathan out of the plot. This dude is literally trying to... I'm trying to make him become my friend right now. He'll say no. I... Okay. Please don't kill me. Okay, he won't back the plot either. 
But anyone being in the plot is still dangerous. And now he'll end the plot because he's lost his two biggest conspirators with him. My wife is pregnant once more. Right. Let's keep my... Bafen's so good, but he doesn't like me. If I send him a gift, get him on neutral opinion with me. It's expensive, but having him on neutral opinion to me is just like... Full on worth it. Interesting. Ride Capaxis. No. Oh, he was attacked by arms. Fuck. So there is probably still another plot to try and kill me then. There's a plot in my court. Yeah, there's another one. Uh, let's... Chief General has uh, discovered a man of good talents to be a commander. Oh, he is good. Raise him to nobility. It'll cost 80 gold, though. No, not worth it. Let's get my wife resting while she's pregnant. Oh. My young wife has fulfilled her education. And in the ways of court and citizenship, and she's excelled in her studies. Oh, wonderful. That's excelling! <laughs> oh, because it applies to both intrigue and diplomacy. Interesting. I thought it would only apply to one. Marry my second wife. Sure, everyone wants to kill this Daisy Snow kid. I guess I'll join in. You still at war? Pregnancy has caused my wife to develop quite the unusual tastes. Most of what she asks for for dinner nowadays ranges from mildly unsettling to positively revolting. Still, scholars do agree that a pregnant woman's craving should always be accommodated. I don't want to stress her. She can have a quail's foot. That sounds the least disgusting of the options. Cahor is under attack from the anti-slavery iron port and is needed for aid. Who's attacking you? Iron port. The Mother Roin Uprising. Hmm. I won't get involved in this. I don't much care for Cahor. I don't know if I'm going to be doing any trade with them. I want to... Shakhtan Sh I don't even know. King Shakhtan? Who? Not him. Not him. Who the hell's King Shakhtan? Is that the King of the Iron Throne? No, that's Queen Mer uh, Murray. Who? What an interesting couple they are. It's not going to be the Emperor of Yeti, is it? No. I don't know who that is, so I'm not going to get involved. Yeah, the, I was going to say the carpet for pureborn, so. A different terminology for them. Payment to my turtles, Balerion is hiring men for attack against me. What? So he rides Arryn of Illyria. Oh, it's Rhaegal's son. He He's trying to get a claim on me in Bravos. Married to my aunt Malaris. Quick, attractive. Yeah, no chance. No chance Aaron is going to be big enough to beat. Especially if, if Marine sides with me, now that he's somewhat likes me. Quicksilver will just eat him in one bite. <laughs> like, let's be real here. And that's me being kind to him. That's me being kind to, to the possibility that he could win. A line that name is awesome. Lord Coronet of the Isle of So a new Lord of the Isle of Cedars. Have you had a son yet? You have not. 
and your wife's not pregnant, so you're probably going to lose your title. But his son... Oh no, he's the son of a former uh, Triarch of Atlantis has inherited it. It was his brother who held the title. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Winter fever is broken out in Mantaris. That is not good. I do not like winter fever. They want to kill the Triarch. Prefer if they wouldn't. Valar. I'm going to keep that name. Valar sounds pretty cool. But he's my heir. Let's have a look at my heir then. Prince Valar. He is club-footed. Oh dear. His mother? No, he just... His mother was attractive. And he just ended up being club-footed by himself. Let's go for have a knight. Because I'm... Be, or become a knight. Because I'm still a squire for some reason. And for him, let's... Oh no, this is for Jackwas. Um, let's get Jackwas to continue down Marshall. And my son, let's get him... I'm considering... Maybe... Rift or Pride. Or, I mean, I would be best at teaching him struggle and alike, but let's go with Thrift. And then maybe I could have him be educated by Baylor, because Baylor's very good at everything. Would you be a guardian of my son? Or is my son too young? Yeah, be a guardian of Jackwas then. Imagine if I said the Vuzzlebricks to be. Guardian by him. That would be really funny. Let's have him guardian my brother. I went right to express my consternation. My, my uh, consultation at the fact that uh, Lord Freehold and Murano Varus seems to enjoy free command of your armies. And someone of a high status would clearly be more appropriate. Uh, yes, you make a good point. You almost finished with your war. <laughs> Taking you a long time to fight this asshole. And now, wait, East is at war? Who are they at war with? As uh, for Kaznak's claim for New Geese. I've already given you back New Geese 1. I better not have to do it a second time. Oh my god, I am, aren't I? He's been completely outmatched in this battle. But who's wait? Who's he fighting against? Because I might just demand they end the war. That's what I said. Has he not just won because he's got her in jail? Okay, good. He just rushed the objective and won. He's in in uh, Paramaris' brother. Interesting. Ray, you're still fighting off his wall. What wall scores are you on? 5% and he's losing. Oh my goodness. Why is he even bothered fighting in this war? It's not his war. He's, he's joined it as a, as a defender. My lordship of Iskari kills. I assume that this it's this province. He's given Gis away? It's an advanced colony. Why are you giving Gis away? It's probably better than your actual capital. Oh, what? <laughs> Never mind. 18k in his capital. Oh my goodness. I had really considered and I really wanted to find a way to in in Illyria, like, ex start expanding it to have these extra slots here. And there is a way to do it, but it's so annoyingly complex that it's not really worth it. There is an event that you can do in base game, but they, they just removed it from this mod. You, you can't do it in this mod, specifically. Which is a bit of a shame. Means it's, a uh, Other group. My aunt has a claim on my throne. Oh, because I removed her 
When did I remove her from my council? I don't remember doing that. I don't really like you, Tehavon, but you can be on my council because you like me. And I need loyalists. Someone new has been elected in... Atlantis? Let's have a look at him. Uh, Arios. He is okay with me, but he's not a huge fan. Hey, I'll take that, honestly. Melion March, let's get... Hmm. Private Farms? Zoclus, let's get some... Oh, summer plantations, absolutely. And then Tolos will go for something cheap, like some stables. Ah, oh, no man, I'm going to spend a huge amount of money to fix that. Of course, one of the colonies is always going to have a problem in his fixing. Oh, religious scrolls. Yes, yes, I'll buy those. Can't equip it, okay. Oh, I need good learning. Why, oh, damn. That's the thing I'm never gonna have. <laughs> oh, here we go. 45k? Why is she... Over there. Okay, Vol Volantis is gonna help. Baylor has chosen not to. Yunkai has chosen not to. Uh, Yunkai has chosen to stand with her because it is his wife. Astapor is not getting involved because they're not counted as my vassal because the game has no clue what the hell is going on with them. I think she's going to try and land on my capital. So Marine's not involved because they're fighting Hazlahan. Is it another slave war? Oh no, it's for his claim. Interesting. Oh, never mind. Asapol's siding with the rebels. Crap. Gis is... Gis is siding with the rebels, is he? Not just against me, he's with the rebels. Oh, my lord. I do. If I had Bathan, I'd at least have an extra army. Am I able to... He's a navy here. Throw these into marine to unite with that army there. They're going to want to land on our capital. These ships up. We need even more. Thank goodness. Get this lady over here as well then. Can't let him escape. Uh, we'll do a... Uh, uh, Steve, her Valyrian Steel Blades. I have two Valyrian Steel Blades, so I can pass that one on. Get Pasenia in his arm, so I have two dragons. Patch this army. Right, this is where we're fighting Princess Valeris in battle. This is... 
my my aunt yeah oh, wow he's now a dragon rider so he's got a balloon steel sword and he's a dragon rider this guy's very cool I've been grievously burned in the battle oh but I can take out her dragon she may burn me but she shall lose in the battle Let's declare ever pay for So he's also now declaring war on me. In a separate war. Oh my god. No no no, you're you're defending me. You're defending me. Oh, I was gonna I was really worried for a moment then. That game was just, the game was confusing me for a moment. No, he's on my side. It's a separate army that's attacking me. Emperor Balerian. Who is Regal's son, who got absolutely murked in that battle. So the f interesting. So he's fighting technically against his mother's claim. It's weird that he has money considering she spent all her money. I feel like both of them shouldn't be able to have money to fight this. But apparently they do. Let's try and catch him in Yunkai. Where's the Marine's army? There we go, 10k. I was going to say, did he have no army? We're going to catch him in Yunkai. No way he can get out of Yunkai. Okay, and then after this, we have to go take out that army. Ah. Oh. Volon and her rider pick you out and drive straight for you. Volon collides heavily with Vulgaris, who proceeds to rip at his flesh. You are left dazed with my dragon's lifeless corpse beside me. And now I am a, in a regency. Can't afford a funeral. Get just the best fighters in this army. There's not many dragon riders left. Get on our ships. I'm still I'm still young. I can't be spending much money on the food and the like. Especially when we're fighting two wars at once. Two of our probably toughest wars at once as well. Let's land directly on them. Yeah, they have dragons. Ugh. We're gonna be wiped. There goes our army. Damn! The Rider of Ifelix met in fierce combat, driving their dragons to tear each other. So Tolisson is dead. It's only four years old, so it makes sense. Take a white piece. As long as she has dragons in this army, there's basically nothing I can do to stop her, and I just have to—I'm gonna have to fight elsewhere, basically, because we just cannot combat those armies. Yeah, when we're running out of defenders here as well. Yeah, there's only hundred troops left. He just stole Zoclos from me. Oh, we're going to kill this dude. When this war's done, this no matter who wins, this dude's getting absolutely killed for that. Mm 
destroying our own capital. Like, she's gonna win, but at what cost? During the Siege of Illyria, the North Illyrian fleet, led by the ship, the ship blank, did battle with the enemy fleet, the loss of this great sea battle. Oh! What? Sorry, how much damage did he just do? That is um, completely unbelievable. Like, it's a capital. That's incredible. Unbelievable amounts of damage to do to the capital. A capital you want to rule from after this, by the way. Like, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. Oh, I have a plan. I want to get revenge on Baylor of Nugis. Everything I've given him and he chooses to burn my capital to the ground, does he? See how Gis enjoys being burned to the ground. Just destroying Illyria. She's determined to just destroy. It's it's incredibly bloody. Like this, you we're going to be earning absolutely no money from our capital for a long time because of the damage she's doing. He's take out these capitals. So much of my inventory that I've conquered, at least. Can't use any of it though, because I'm only how old two. I mean, both my mother and father died on Dragonback. I don't even know how many dragons are going to be left after this. We feel like we're we're killing all of the dragons off. Oh, that was the wrong one. I meant the show me the dragons. There are still dragons, but like a lot of Majesty's dragons are dead, which is the ones that I really care about. We've lost a lot of dragons in this part of the world from this war. And this this dude, Valerian, I don't even know where he is. That's his army. That, okay, he's got 14k. Melior Mark's going to start losing his defenses. Great! I love losing all of my money in a war. Because they're just destroying the entire countryside. And Marine isn't even fighting. I, I do not think this is a winnable position with 20k coming from Trello here. But who I surrender to her because she is the one who has claimed victory here. Did my surrender not go through? And now she's fine here. Okay. Well, a lot of stuff is going to have to be organized here. And I... I'm still the king of North Valyria itself, but not the... Where is... what? She's ruling from the port of size. Okay, I'm going to have to organize some stuff. I will... <laughs> This is an absolute mess. This, this, when you get this part of the game, it becomes a mess. We will be right back and fixing this stuff. And a new order has taken hold in Valyria. And we are now led by Malaris the Merry of North Valyria. 
I had to do a lot of fixing because being in two wars at once kind of breaks the game and the second war would actually never end. Well, it would end, but it wouldn't end great. So I've chosen that Prince Valerian, the man who started the war, uh, will bring Bort to peace. He is my son. And he's going to be rewarded in some way for choosing a peaceful solution with us. Or we may even say that he was his war was to aid our war. But nonetheless, we need to find something to bring to him. I think I'm going to have to be making a lot of changes in the next session as Malaris to pay off a lot of what's happened. We are not doing great financially. Uh, I don't know why Geese hasn't rejoined. That may be a glitch, but we're going to try and fix that. Oh, I mean, you can already see I've already actually gone quite a few days into the future to try and fix a lot of the glitches we already had. There's been a few. And the actual outcome of the new border changes, because I do want to make some border changes and some changes in this region. That will come next session, next episode. For this episode, I want to reveal that we have not ended the line of Cinder, the original line. The true line does still have power, but a weak, diminished power, controlling only over this region of North Valyria. You may say, why don't I continue playing as them? And it's because I want to chart the story of the Empire itself. That's always been my intent. It's the whole reason why the whole reason, the whole reason why when we had the previous civil war, I continued playing here because the story was here. That doesn't mean I'm not going to keep an eye on these guys, and I will consider possibly switching to them. But I think the story is more interesting if I continue as the the dominant line of Cinder. If we are taken over by someone who isn't a Cinder then I will continue as a Cinder. That's guaranteed. Because we are playing as all of the House of Cinder. We are not just playing as these ones, whoever is in charge. So we're going to be keeping an eye on the main line of Cinder, as well as obviously as our brothers and sisters who are Cinders as well. But Empress Merlalis is victorious. And Cinder, or Illyria itself, has burned, going from prosperous to <laughs> bankrupt. With barely any tax, uh, we are going to have to do a lot of repairs in Illyria, a lot of repairs in the Port of Size, and lots of repairs in Melior March. So we are going to be not actually very wealthy for quite a while, and it's her own fault, really, for how aggressive she took to the battle walls. But our wealth will come back, and the story only grows from here, and I'm so looking forward to what comes next. I really did try in the war, but as soon as um, Eamon the second died, we didn't have much of a chance. It's a shame we only got one session with Eamon. Eamon wouldn't have been a lot of fun to play with stats like that. Valar, we've no idea what he's going to grow into. But clearly his diplomats are giving him a lot of bonuses there. And we're going to be keeping an eye on Valar the whole way through. Valar has been allowed to keep his family blade of majesty. And... A couple of artifacts that his family had claimed, but we have claimed the royal artifacts, such as Warden, the ruby set, the crown of pearls, a golden sword, and we have claimed Chimera, which is the blade which shall rule all. And of course, we are ride on the back of Ifelix, which once was ridden by uh, Jaharis. So we still have some connection to the family that came before through. Iphelix, our dear dragon. But what does it come from here? Who knows? This is an uncharted territory for this game, and it can only go interestingly from here. I assure you of that. I want to thank you guys so much for all of your support on the series so far. Thank you to all of my Patreons. If you have any suggestions, any feelings about how this episode has gone or how any episode goes any ideas for the future about what we do is how cinder please do leave a comment and let me know how you want things to go in the future my hope is that we are going to be living at least a little while as malaris i'd like a couple of episodes of calm after this episode i assure you of that i would love some peace we are not going to be going to hostile wars for a long time <laughs> thank you guys so much for all of your support and i will see you in the next episode. Until then.